United States. What happens there also could have an impact on the entire world. The U.S. Federal Reserve has announced another interest hike. Investors' concerns that the global economy could fall into recession as the Fed and other central banks raise interest rates in an effort to stop inflation. Russia's gas cuts will hurt businesses. European economies could plunge into recession. It will naturally have an impact on our macroeconomic fundamentals as well as it is having on other countries. The world economy is speeding towards a cliff edge. Stocks are down, inflation is up and investors are moody. Everyone is wondering the same thing. Are we heading into a recession? Hi everybody, the year of 2022 has been a roller coaster ride for economies all across the world. The Russia-Ukraine war put both Russia and Europe in a recession, China is already facing an economic crisis due to both Covid and real estate issues, and here in India, we have already seen the value of our currency go up and down like never before. And same is the case with major currencies all across the world. On top of that, now the United States seems to be heading towards a recession, and this has sent shockwaves all across the world. Why? Because if the biggest economy in the world witnesses a recession, it's going to have a ripple effect on economies all across the world, including India. Especially considering the fact that America is the largest export partner of India. So in this case study, let's try to understand why does everyone think America is heading towards a recession? How will this affect the economy of India? What can you do as investors to benefit from this recession? And most importantly, what are the study materials to help you understand this upcoming economic downturn? This video is brought to you by Vested, but more on this at the end of the video. To understand the impact of US recession, we first have to understand the definition of recession. And the fun fact is that there is no absolute definition for recession at all. A recession is simply a subjective concept and is actually determined by different parameters by different bodies. But two of the most popular definitions are, number one is the technical recession, which is when there are two consecutive quarters of GDP contraction. So now that the US economy shrank by 0.6 and 1.6% in the last two quarters, technically the US is already in a recession. And if you remember, the same was the case during COVID. The second definition is actually defined by the National Bureau of Economic Research, which determines recession on the basis of multiple parameters. And this includes the household employment, personal income, consumption, expenditure, industrial production, etc. And similarly, there are multiple definitions for recession as per different bodies. But the fun fact is that there is literally no fixed way to determine when and how bad a recession is going to be because it depends on countless factors that even the smartest people on the planet cannot predict. So the question is, how the hell do we anticipate a recession and what can we do to safeguard our wealth? Well, out of the many methods, there is one method by which economists have come the closest to predicting a recession. In fact, research says that had we looked at this one graph properly, we could have predicted all major recessions in the past 50 years. This graph that I'm talking about is called as the yield curve, which is nothing but the graph of the bond yield rates. I think yield curve has been uh, kind of an overhang. Inverted yield curve. Yikes. Inverted sure. yield curves can often, but not always, predict a recession. Yield curve inversion, which has taken place in the past and how that has been a precursor to a recession. It's not a precondition for a recession, but it's a sign. Now look at those red bars. Those are recessions. The yield curve is the, the chart. Look at the fact that it dips before every recession. Now, if you know the concept of bond, please keep to this timestamp. And for those who don't know, here's a very, very simple explanation of the same. A bond is nothing but a loan given to the government. So if the Indian government wants to build a bridge for 100 crores, instead of going to the World Bank, it will simply borrow this 100 crore rupees from the people of India. Now, obviously, one person cannot give the government 100 crore rupees, right? So the government will divide this 100 crore bond into 10,000 units, with each unit being worth 1 lakh rupees. Now, since the government cannot reach out to all of its citizens at once, it will sell 5,000 units each to two banks, HDFC and ICICI, who will buy these units at 50 crore rupees each. And then they will sell it to their customers at 1 lakh rupees per unit. So when 10,000 people buy one unit of this bond, they've essentially loaned the government 1 lakh rupees each and 100 crore rupees collectively through HDFC and ICICI. And in return, the government would guarantee that after one year, it will return this money with a 3% interest. So after one year, the government will pay their investors the 1 lakh rupees plus 3% interest, which amounts to 3,000 rupees. This is what the ideal bond market looks like. 
Now the catch over here is that the longer you keep this money with the government, the more interest they will give you. For example, a two year bond could pay you 3% interest and a 10 year bond could pay you 7% interest. And this is where the demand supply forces come in, whereby the short term interest rates and long term interest rates start fluctuating. For example, let's say there is a three year bond being sold at 100 rupees per unit at 3% interest and a 10 year bond that is being sold at the same 100 rupees per unit. But since it's a long term bond, it has an interest rate of 5%. So if you invest 100 rupees in a three year bond, you would get three rupees as interest and five rupees as interest for the 10 year bond. Now, when you plot this on a graph, this is what a yield curve looks like when these units are being sold at 100 rupees per unit. Now, listen to this very, very carefully. If there is nobody buying these three year units from HDFC, what will HDFC do? They would decrease the price of the unit to 60 rupees. But since the return is the same, if Rahul bought this unit, he would still get three rupees return for the 60 rupees unit. So while three rupees interest on 100 rupees is 3%, three rupees interest on 60 rupees is 5%. Similarly, if there's a lot of demand for the 10 year bond units, then HDFC would increase the price of this unit to 120 rupees. But again, since the return is the same 5 rupees, a 5 rupees interest on 120 rupees amounts to an interest rate of 4.16%. So do you see what happened? Due to the market forces, the interest of a short term bond has become more than the long term bond. As a result, the yield curve becomes inverted. And when this happens throughout the market between a three month bond yield to a 10 year bond yield, it is said that the yield curve has inverted. And every time this has happened in the past 50 years, we have seen a recession. And right now, this is what the yield curve looks like. Now you see in this graph, this is what it looked like in 2007, wherein in January, while the yield for a three month bond was 5.11%, during the same time for the 10 year bond, it was just 4.76%. And here's where the curve got inverted and we saw the 2008 recession. Similarly, it happened in 2000 also and we saw the dot com burst. And now we are again coming very, very close. While the yield for a three month bond is 3.19%, for a 10 year bond, it's at 3.45%. So it's very, very close to inverting. Now, if this three month yield goes above the 10 year yield, the possibility of a recession is almost certain. This is what the yield curve tells us about the upcoming recession. And apart from this correlation, there are multiple factors that are signs of an upcoming recession. Inflation is at a record 9.1% in the US, oil prices have spiked, GDP is slowing down, and copper prices have been dropping down. So apart from the technical recession, we could actually be looking at a nightmare-like recession by the end of 2022 or in the beginning of 2023. This is the reason why there is tension everywhere in the market. So now the question over here is, how will this recession affect the Indian economy? And as investors, what should we do to safeguard our wealth? Well, every time recession happens, ladies and gentlemen, the inflation goes up and the federal government hikes the interest rate of lending. Today, the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by three quarters of a percentage point. And we anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. So the Federal Reserve announced Wednesday it is raising interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point. That is the sharpest increase since 1994. The Federal Reserve today making an unprecedented move to try and tamp down rising prices by raising interest rates. Federal Reserve announcing its decision on interest rate hikes. And you know, every time I hear this news saying that the Feds have hiked the interest rate, I always wondered why would the American bank hiking some random interest rate be such a big deal for the Indian economy? And even you must have wondered the same, isn't it? Well, as it turns out, this has a direct impact on something called the currency carry trade, which then goes on to affect the value of our currency, which then takes a toll on our imports, eventually has a ripple effect on our economy. So the question is, what the hell is this currency carry trade and how does it cause this domino effect? Well, as usual, let's try to understand this using a story. Let's say Parsh is a billionaire who wants to make money using currency carry trade. So this is what he would do. Firstly, he would check the lending rates in the US banks and check the bond market in India. So if the US banks are lending at 2% interest and the Indian bonds are yielding 4% interest, it is a suitable market for the currency carry trade. So Parsh will deploy his strategy. So in his first step, Parsh will borrow $1 million from the US bank. Secondly, he would convert this $1 million into rupees, which would amount to 8 crore Indian rupees or 80 million Indian rupees. And then he would invest these 8 crore rupees in the Indian bond and leave it over there for one year. Then after one year, he would get his 8 crore rupees with a 4% interest, which amounts to 8.32 crores. 
Now, he would convert this amount to dollars, which would amount to 1.04 million dollars. But if you see, he only has to pay 2% interest to the American bank, as in 1.02 million dollars. So guess what? He would pay the American bank 1.02 million out of 1.04 million that he has made from the Indian bond market. And the rest 0.02 million dollars will be his profit. In the Indian currency, that's what 16 lakh rupees. So you see, by simply rotating the money, Pash was able to make 16 lakh rupees. This is how foreign investors rotate their money in the international markets and make money through currency carry trade. And if you see, this currency carry trade has been made possible because of the difference in the interest rates levied by the American bank versus the interest which is being given by the Indian bond market. And now, let's see what happens if the feds hike the interest rate. So now, if the American banks start levying 3% interest, what will happen? Pars will have to pay $1.03 million, which shrinks his profit to only $10,000, which is just 8 lakh rupees. On top of that, if the value of rupee depreciates from 80 to 82 rupees, when he converts his 8.32 crores into dollars, he would only have $1.01 million. But since the Fed's interest rate is 3%, he has to pay $1.03 million to the bank, which means this currency carry trade has become a loss venture for Parsh. So moral of the story is that when the Feds hike the interest rate, the currency carry trade becomes risky. So the investors start pulling out money from the Indian bond market and either go to the US market or some other country. And when thousands of such investors start quitting the Indian bond market, the demand for the Indian currency goes down. As a result, it becomes a major factor because of which the value of rupee goes down. And if the value of rupee goes down, what happens? Imports become costlier, profit margins become thinner in every import dependent industry. As a result, the cost of the products go up, eventually causing a ripple effect in the economy. This is how the currency carry trade affects the value of our currency and affects our economy. This is the reason why the news headlines often keep saying even RBI needs to hike the interest rates so that we can control the value of our currency. This is the first major way by which a US recession will affect the Indian economy. Secondly, we have the super important IT industry. Did you guys know that the IT industry is one of the most important industries for India that contributes around 8% to the entire GDP of India and it employs around 5 million people. On top of that, the Indian IT industry is so dependent on US and Europe that they contributed around 86% to Indian IT firms revenues in FY22. So now that Europe is already facing a crunch, if US also faces a recession, the ripple effect will be felt in the Indian IT industry. Now most people over here might tell you that layoffs will happen and the Indian IT industry will lose money, right? Well, if they tell you that, you got to understand that they do not understand the power of software at all. In simple words, software and business is like water for life. Even if you are poor, you will save all the money in the world just to buy water. And in worst case, you will consume less water. But you can never ever cut it off from your life. Similarly, software is so important for business that you just cannot stop using software. All you can do is just reduce the expansion or pause the purchase of new softwares. That's it. So in our context, the IT companies might stop expanding rapidly, might experience a growth slowdown, but will definitely not witness a loss because software to business is like water for life. So if you look at Infosys, although their revenues grew during COVID, their operating margins actually dropped from 25% in 2015 to 21% in 2020. And again, after a bump, it is dropping. This is because of the high attrition rate that the industry is facing right now. So when the recession comes, the salaries of IT professionals may not jump as much as it is jumping today. Lastly, we will see a drastic impact on our merchandise sales for which we have big clients both in the Europe and the US. In fact, United States is the largest export destination for India amounting to 16-18% to of our total exports. So a recession in the US will directly lead to less exports from India. In fact, in economic times, Rafik Ahmed, who is the chairman of one of the largest leather manufacturing companies in India, says that new orders from summer 2023 has seen a 15% dip in volumes and clients are cutting the orders for winter 2023 by 20-25%. to on top of that, the garment industry is also facing a similar situation. And lastly, another major problem that the Indian markets will face because of US recession are startup funding crunch and layoffs. And you might have seen this already that the investors are now pushing these startups towards profitability. And if there's any startup that is far, far away from profitability, it is either laying off employees or those companies are going bankrupt. 
And because we've already covered this in one of our previous episodes, I'll give you a link in the description to help you understand the Indian startup funding crunch. By the way, it's not like everything is bad when recession happens. Oil prices tend to fall during a recession. So if the oil prices fall during this recession, if the government is kind enough, we might see the fuel costs go down. So that could act as a counter for the inflation in the country because of the cost of transportation and the cost of goods both will go down. Similarly, commodity prices are expected to fall further. So if the depreciation of the rupee is in control, if there is no war affecting the prices, then India might again benefit with low cost of imports. This is how a recession in the US will affect the Indian economy. Now, in spite of covering so much, I've barely scratched the surface. And since it's already information overload for this episode, I'll give you the links to the study materials in the description to help you understand this and other impacts of the US recession on the Indian economy. Meanwhile, while most of us become extremely anxious about where to invest during a recession or how to protect your wealth, I gotta tell you, even though I'm not a finance expert, my strategy has been very simple and it's been super effective. I simply invest in good index funds managed by reputed banks. That's it. So instead of waiting for a perfect time, I would say keep investing in small installments and automatically your risk will get balanced as the recession comes and goes. And all thanks to Vested, this index fund investment could also be done in the US stock market. Like you saw, all the major stocks are already at record lows. And Vested gives you access to 1500 plus stocks, ETFs and a curated basket of stocks called WES. It allows you to do fractional investing whereby you can buy shares of Apple, Google or Tesla for as little as $1. The best part is that they follow RBI's LRS scheme and you get the lowest FX fees with Vested. They use a 256-bit encryption and SSL to protect all the user data. So if this sounds useful to you, download the Vested app using the exclusive link in the description and get $10 in your account to start your investment journey with Vested. Moving on to the study materials, the first thing I'm attaching is a research paper on the yield curve and the recession. And this paper will give you an in-depth understanding between the correlation of these concepts. Secondly, I am attaching a Think School video itself that I spoke about earlier in the episode, which talks about the startup bubble in India. And apart from that, I am attaching the email coming from Sequoia Capital itself, which warned the founders about the tough times ahead. And thirdly, I am attaching a research paper from the Kellogg's University that will help you understand the currency carry trade concept in detail. So do have a look at them and let me know what you think in the comments. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.